Hey up, Rock God 2004 back with another video for you, and I thought I would do the next. I've got a hair in me fucking face. <sighs> Bastard. Hey up, Rob. Mm. Roll sound. Rolling. Sound production take two. Hey up, Rock God 2004 back with another video for you. And I thought today I would do another Iron Maiden one. And I'm going to do the 12 inch singles and 12 inch and shaped picture discs. Um, they've only done two 7 inch. I think it was normal size seven inch picture discs which I showed with the singles and um, I'm also going to show some of the import 12 inch singles that I've got as well not Japanese I've done them these are like more like European and uh, I know there's Germany uh, Holland and I think I've got a French so I'll, I'll show them as well so first up is Sanctuary This one is from Holland. It's the Dutch press. Uncensored. We're there on the corner. And like I was saying with the seven inch single drifter. Does not have the expletives in. This does have Prowler on as well though. Um, I've got two of this because one's got a really uh, strange sort of... Um, I wouldn't say error, but it's like as though it's been printed twice on the sleeve. And I don't know if it's going to show up on here. Uh, right, no, it's not that one. So the artwork's exactly the same as the UK 7-inch. This was never released as a 12-inch in UK. Um, I hate that EMI label. It's just so dull. So you get Sanctuary and Prowler on the A side and live versions of Drifter and the Montrose song I've Got the Fire on the B side. Um, and it's the other sort of copy of this that I've got that's got that strange... I'll show you anyway, I'll see if it shows up. I nearly put it on eBay a kind of few years ago and something stopped me. It's exactly the same, exactly the same labels and everything, same track listing. It's just that on the back, I can't even see it myself, it's not showing up. Maybe it was the other one. I'll explain what it is because I can't see it. Where this white print was at the bottom. You could see it again under the black print, and I can't... It's got to be one of them, I just couldn't see it in this light. So it was like a sort of a fault on the print, I thought. Ooh, I've just got the only one. But I th I'm sure I've seen another one since. Um, which leads me to believe that there's a few like that. So I don't know if it's rare or not. So if you've got this 12-inch, check it on the back somewhere. And the other version I've got... Looks the same on the front. This is the German pressing. Same track listing, but you get this on the back. It might be that actually that you see showing through the black, thinking about it. And what I love about this, this took me years to find. And I never thought I was gonna get it. Same track listing, but the old-fashioned brown and red EMI label and it looks so strange seeing a Maiden record play with that label I have actually got a few on that label now and um, mainly albums though but yeah same again same track listing same artwork 
but on the German one you get that little bit of extra text on the back of the sleeve and the red and brown EMI labels. So that's the first one. Sanctuary. Next up was the first UK 12 inch single, which was Maiden's third single for EMI. And that's Women in Uniform. So you're supposed to, <laughs> supposed to stab Thatcher on the back and then she came back for this. I love the artwork on these old ones. The old dates again. Um, and this is the first pressing with the original Eddie labels. So you get Women in Uniform and Invasion on side one. Where it was like Invasion on side two of the seven inch. And on the B side you get this mega version of Phantom of the Opera. Which is live in London somewhere. I can't remember where it is. I don't think it's the Ruskin Arms. I think it might be the Marquee. I think it's the Marquee. And then, a few years ago, I discovered this by sheer chance. It's the UK one again, but it's a later pressing, but it's really um, flimsy. But this has the same labels as the Trooper and Flight of Icarus. The red with the black print. Never ever seen it before. Didn't even know it existed. And then as a bonus, to make it even better, there's no label on Phantom of the Opera. So that's a sort of a mispress as well. As that. So, yeah, I was uh, jolly pleased to get that one. Um, and the final women in uniform I've got is the French pressing. 45 tours or 45 RPM tours again same three songs don't think that's on the English one and no UK date on the bottom it just advertises the run free single um, this is the Eddie labels but they look so faded like a bad um, bootleg but it's not, it is the French one And Phantom of the Opera. So that's the second 12 inch, but the first UK pressing on 12 inch Phantom of the Opera. No, it's not. Women in uniform. Next one was only available as a 12 inch again in Europe. We just got it as a 7 inch in a cassette single, and it's I think this is German, I don't think it's Dutch, but this is the double A side of Twilight Zone and Wrathchild. It's nice to see that artwork, bigger. The only time I think, if I remember rightly, you can see this artwork without the Maiden logo at the top is on the cassette single, which I've got as well. Other side, and this is just the nasty cream coloured label I mean there's a lot of empty space there but I tell you what um, this sounds absolutely unreal it's really really bassy and loud because uh, with it being a 12 inch and on 45 and short songs like the groove is quite wide so it sounds it sounds really really good so that's Twilight Zone and Rothschild. Next 12 inch that came out was only available as a 12 inch. Um, I was lucky to get this in the condition it's in because even when I bought this new, because the sleeve is so thin, it had a like a hole in the bottom where the record had worn through and that was new. This is like almost mint and I've never seen another one, especially the sleeve in such good condition. Uh, this is the UK pressing of Made in England. Normally, it's hard to find them in this condition because they get so tatty because they're just like really really flimsy paper um, but I'll take that out 
just so you can see how nice that looks. 42 year old and it's just about brand new looking. So the UK one's just four songs and the vinyl itself also just looks new. Um, running free and remember tomorrow on side one and killers and innocent exile on side two. Now I've got a few uh, different pressings of this from other countries um, but that one I'm just so glad to have it in that condition the, the UK one um, I'm sure that's the one I bought off my good friend Steve if you watch it this one I believe is the Canadian This is a five track one. Um, and with it being Canadian, it's on the Harvest label. Uh, you can also get this one on Capital. But this is definitely Harvest. Now the UK one plays at 45. This one plays at 33. So... You get Running Free and Remember Tomorrow again, but I like the way the song titles are wrote the same way as they are on the back of the Killers album. And also below Iron Maiden, you actually get the Made in Japan. That's not on the UK one. But there's the Harvest logo. And then on side two, you get the extra one first. You get Wrathchild, Killers and Innocent Exile. So you get the three songs on there. Um, the version of... Wrathchild on this as well is at the time it was anyway I've never heard anywhere else it's a different live version it's not like the same one that's on uh, the live of the rainbow album it is in Japan and I've never heard this particular version anywhere else except on the Made in Japan EP so that is the um, is it Canadian? I'm sure it's Canadian Capital I'm sure it is. I don't think I've got the USA. I used to have, but I don't now. I don't think. Oh. Right, that's that one. And this is the last one I've got. Looks the same as that because it's got the mini LP. Actually, I think that last one is US because I think the Canadian front is written in French. I think it's US. Right, this is also the five track version with Rothschild on. Also on Harvest, but this one is the New Zealand pressing. And the reason I wanted this is because it's got the old green Harvest label as well. Running free, remember tomorrow, and then you get, same as the US and Canadian, um, Rothschild, Killers, and innocent exile don't see them with that harvest label a whole lot so i was absolutely over the moon to get that one so that's 1981's live ep made in japan the next single again only on 12 inch was released abroad not in the uk and this is the german pressing of bruce's first effort run to the hills again these uh, german um, and Holland pressings on 12 inch they sound absolutely phenomenal um, the next one up is one of the best I've sounded after this but this sounds fantastic as well different two days because you know obviously the UK one's there um, and this record label didn't have the, the new headlamp label on both sides they did the same as what they did with the number of the beast album. You get that on the run to the hillside. And you get that on the total eclipse side. Which I think looks absolutely fantastic. It looks so much nicer. I do like to see things different like that. Paper sleeve again, so it's quite flimsy. Um, 
and it does poke out the bottom a little bit there, but the record is no, nothing wrong with it at all. So that's 1982's Run to the Hills. Next one, again, didn't get a UK 12 inch release. I've got two pressings of this. One's Holland, one's Germany. So this one's the Dutch one, and it's the number of the beast. Super sound maxi single. Wow, does this sound fantastic. Probably the best I've actually heard the song on any vinyl press, and it sounds amazing. With Remember Tomorrow, not recorded live in Italy. Um, the Holland one comes in a hard, hard card outer sleeve like an album does. And you get the white polylined inner with the not very pleasant creamy MI labels. I just they just look horrible. So plain and dull. Um the German one. Wow, this one is pretty stunning. The only fault I've got with the German one is that it doesn't have that outer card sleeve. It's like the Runs of the Hills one where it's just the thin paper one. Um, and the back of the sleeve is pretty much the same. But the, whoever I got this off has put it in this polyline sleeve. And it's got such nice labels. Look at that. Same as the English um, 7 inch. With number of the beast red logo on the top and then remember tomorrow on side two they do sound absolutely unreal both of these and um, this to me and run to the hills for me should have had 12 inch releases in the uk but they didn't never mind so that's the German and the Dutch pressings of the 12 inch of The Number of the Beast. The next single did get a 12 inch release um, in the UK. First UK 12 inch release since Made in Japan. So this was only the third UK 12 inch single and it was only available over here on a picture disc. Uh, and it's flight of Icarus. And on the B side, you get the studio version, a new recording of Montrose's I Got the Fire with Bruce on vocals and Nico on drums, originally released by these live on the Sanctuary B side. However, I do have the German 12 inch as well. The sleeve's a little bit tatty, but there's nothing wrong with the record. That's the main thing, I suppose, really. Now, for some bizarre reason, this is off peace of mind, but they decided to keep the number of the Beast labels, which doesn't really bother me. It's just a little bit weird, but it's better than the... I'd rather have it like that than the cream ones, put it that way. And uh, I've got the fire on that side. It's nice to have Flight of Icarus on 12 inch black vinyl as opposed to just being a picture disc because like 1983 picture discs still sound a bit rough as hell to be honest. So yeah, 1983's Flight of Icarus. Next up was The Trooper, however, I know I've got it, but I've mislaid the shaped picture disc. I don't know where I put it. So if I find it before I finish this, I'll add it on the end. But I do have the um, the German 12-inch single. I'm sure you've seen it before. It's it's basically that, and it's just cut to shape round it, and it's got the trooper on that one side. This is the picture disc, obviously. And it's got Cross-Eyed Mary on the beast. I was a big Iron Maiden there and the writing on the song there. Um, I think again, yeah, they've stuck to the number of the beast labels on this. 
I'm getting a wee bit worried about my picture just now because I can't imagine where I put it. They were all together. Uh, and a cover of Jethro Tull's Cross-Eyed Mary on side two. Hmm. <laughs> That's the German 12-inch. I have got the picture disc of the Trooper. Next single was off the Power Slave album, and the first one off it was Two Minutes to Midnight. That's the UK 12 inch, of course it is, with the warning, it'll be the only country you probably do it. And on the B side, you got uh, Rainbow's Gold, which was a cover, and I, I was really not keen on these B sides from this era. Uh, and Mission from Harry, which was it's basically a hidden tape recording that Bruce Dickinson did, and he was recording a conversation between himself. Steve Harris and Nico McBrain because somebody had gone up to Nico to get a message to tell him that Steve Harris's bass uh, had cut out on stage or he was having a problem with it or something. So Steve Harris actually sent him, go and tell Nico to keep playing the drums. And he did, and he made Nico mess up. So Nico bollocked him. So it's these arguing about that backstage and the ending is amazing when you hear Steve Harris realise that there's a hidden tape recorder. I won't tell you what he says, but if, you, if you're familiar with this, you'll know. So there's Two Minutes to Midnight. Oh, God, these black and silver labels. Uh, and Rainbow's Gold and Mission from Harry on side two. Um, this was also released in the UK. On a 12-inch picture disc. Basically the same as the sleeve of the black vinyl one. So that is 1984's <laughs> Two Minutes to Midnight. Two Minutes to Midnight. Next Power Slave single, UK 12 inch, Ace is High. King of Twilight and a live version of The Number of the Beast on side two. Bog standard, boring as hell. Black labels with silver print. Absolutely boring and dull as hell. And these black and silver labels like just seemed to last forever. And then again, it got a 12 inch picture disc release. And the beast, <laughs> this is trippy as hell if you watch this when it plays. I think it's supposed to represent, when you're watching it, it goes round, it's like a spiral. So it's just like showing what the airplane must see as it's like spiraling down. It's, if you're going to look at it, don't stand up. This is high. Next one, UK 12 inch. Um, first one off the live after death album. This is the only 12 inch single that I don't have the Japanese one of. Running free live. It does have Sanctuary on the B side, like the 7 inch, but on the 12 inch you get the bonus Murders in the Room Org. There's some different coloured label variations of this. I've got the bug standard black one, but there's some, the, the labels like sort of a purpley plum. Everything else is the same, it's nothing really special. I do love both versions of Running Free and Sanctuary on this, actually. Uh, actually, Meds in the Room Org is really good as well. And again, 12 inch picture disc. Love the second side of this on, on the picture there. That's the labels on Live After Death. When you get the little autographs there under the photos. Same track listing. So that's. 1985's Running Free Live. Next one was another live single of Live After Death. Uh, probably one of the worst versions I've heard of this song. And it's a live version of Run to the Hills. That artwork though um, is to represent Phantom of the Opera. Which is on the B side. 
The Phantom of the Opera is quite a long song and it is actually on the B side of the 7 inch as well, which surprised me. But you get this uh, bonus live version of the instrumental Lost for Words, Big Horror, also from Power Slave. It's the only way you can get a live version of Lost for Words. Um, and it's amazing, I'd love to see them do that again live. Same again. Dull black labels. Dull silver print. What a pile of poo. And it's not like they're not capable because the the live after death labels are fantastic. Weird. And once again. Twelve inch picture disc. And the B side of this is um what you got on that bonus Christmas card in the seven inch. It's like Eddie chasing after Cinderella with a glass slipper. Most festive. And for some bizarre reason when I got this, I got a spare Christmas card. I did I'm pretty sure I showed this on the seven inch singles, I know I did. So that's been robbed out of a seven inch single and put in the pitchy disc. I'm not bothered, I've got it now. Um, so I will put that back in there. Run to the Hills, live. The next singles off the new album, they went into a slightly different direction. They started using guitar and bass synths. Um, and this is probably now. I think it's probably with all like the younger fans coming through. And I'm, I'm saying younger fans, you could be in your 30s or even 40s. And um, to me, that's... They are younger fans because like at the time I don't think this was classed as one of their best but now this seems to be a lot of people's favourite Maiden album um, somewhere in time and the first single off it was Wasted Years. This is an absolutely beautiful condition 12 inch single and um, again you get Reach Out on the B side but you get a bonus song Sheriff of Uddersfield which is ba <laughs> it's basically them taking um, Taking the piss out of Rog Small, Rod Smallwood, the manager. And you hear Bruce doing his accent and everything. Uh, a lot of people think this is probably one of the best songs, the best singles. I don't agree. However, I do think it is a really good song. I do like it. It's not the best. Crap labels again. You see all the early ones, like with the eddies on and stuff, you think. And if you've seen the Space Age label on... Um, Somewhere in time, you'd have thought they would have kept it for the singles or done something similar, I don't know. Um, and this is the 7-inch shaped picture disc, which I keep in this little cardboard thing. Which is also what I've got the trooper in, wherever the hell I've put it. I'll take that out, actually, so you can see it better, because it's quite funky, this. So you get Wasted Years on side one. And reach out on side two. This used to seem to be, for me, quite common to get hold of. But now, it, it seems to go for, for what it is, a seven inch shape picture disc. It seems to go for quite a bit. And now it stunned me really because it's a single and it's a seven inch single. And, and, like when you think about it, because the plain surface is still a 7 inch single so I don't know there's a lot of maiden stuff has gone mental though 1986's Wasted Years the second single was up next from somewhere in time and I absolutely love this song um, I mentioned before as well both singles were written by Adrian Smith but this blows Wasted Years out the water for me Amazing condition as well. Stranger in a strange land. With That Girl and Winita on side two. Both of which are covers. And both of which are pretty lame, to be honest. I like it when they write their own B-sides. Like uh, Burning Ambition and Invasion. Stuff like, like the early stuff. I don't like a lot of the covers they do. They do some good ones. But some of the songs they pick sometimes are just utter, utter cack. Stranger in a Strange Land. That was me being sensual. 
that girl, and Juanita, with them dead exciting black labels. A bit like Carlin. I'll get me caught. I couldn't get it in there. And once again, you got a 12 inch picture disc. People go mad for this artwork. Again, it's, I know it's a Clint Eastwood Eddie, but it's not my favorite Eddie or one of them. I seem to go for the more simpler Eddies that I love, like Killers um, and the earlier stuff, Running Free. San I love the Sanctuary one. Um, and even like the Trooper. I mean, that was getting more intricate. That, that's what I got the tattoo of because I just thought it was a really good one and I needed something more colourful to cover the old one up. And Steve Harris has got that one. Uh, and that's the other side of that one. First tour I saw them on and it was absolutely phenomenal. Oh yes, I cried. Again, 1986, Stranger in a Strange Land. Yeah. Next album was sometimes my joint first, sometimes my second favourite album of all time, um, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. And the first single off it was Can I Play With Madness. Uh, the original one that I had, had the same black labels with silver print. And again, you get Black Bart Blues, which is actually really funny. Now, this has got a cover of Thin Lizzy's Massacre. And I think that they were a fantastic version of it. One of the best Maiden covers, actually, I think. Love that song. And Bruce Dickinson sings it absolutely amazing. Just sounds class. This one that I got. I know it's like, it's, it's not the only one, but it's the first time I'd ever seen one. This had a white label with black print. I think the black and silver one's the more common one. So I was actually rather chuffed to have this one for a change. It makes a change from the black and silver all the bloody time. But yeah, if you haven't heard it, which you very probably have, listen to Thin Lizzy's version of Massacre. It's off one of their early albums. I can't remember. Is it off Fighting? It's not Johnny the Fox. I don't think it's that early. It's off one of their ones. You'll, down you'll download it. Listen to Thin Lizzy's version of Massacre. And then listen to their version off the B-side of Carrot Lower Madness. They're both brilliant. I love them both for different reasons. And then... 7-inch shaped picture disc. With Iron Maiden sticker on. Oh. Nice typed out Carrot Lower Madness lyrics. Uh... <coughs> That's the other side. Remember when it came out that um so different and it got mixed reactions. I loved it straight away. Um I took to this more than some of the other stuff like quicker because I just found it really, really good. It's it's it, maybe it's a bit overplayed, I don't know, but give me this other fear of the dark any day. 1988, Carrot Lower Madness. Second single, this came out when it was announced that they were playing the Monsters of Rock Festival at Donington. It was going to be the first time they played it and they headlined it. So they advertised it to hell on the evil at Mendo. This is the 12 inch that's got the monster double sided poster bag. And on this, they should have carried on with this, but they didn't. They re-recorded two old songs. So you got The Evil at Mendo on side one, and then they re-recorded from the first album, Prowler and Charlotte the Harlot. And I'm sure at the time they did say they were going to do it a few times on future singles, and they stopped after that. I was hoping they were going to do a lot, so you could have like then compiled your own 1980 album, but with this lineup totally re-recorded. Um, I'm sure this should have a black sleeve. Yes, it does. Nice, poly-lined black sleeve. This is like as new condition as well. Now, for me, controversial, I think this is the worst song on the album. Yes. I like The Prophecy far better. Um, 
a lot of people say the prophecy is the worst one. Or only the good Dark Young. Nah, for me it's that. I do like it. I just think it's very um, basic. Right, I'll show you the poster. So there's the front of the sleeve there, and it falls to the back there. And then you just get like other shots. I don't know what Bruce was thinking about with that fringe, to be fair. There's God. Oh, there's little Dave. What a lovely bloke. Steve again. Adrian with his mullet. And then on the other side... You get the actual Donington poster. First, I think an only time I've ever been, but look at that for a lineup. Iron Maiden, Kiss, David Lee Roth, Buns and Toasties, Megadeth, and Halloween, and I missed Halloween. I was gutted. But then you got Neil Kay on DJ as well, who was sort of part partly to blame for getting Maiden famous. And the Bailey brothers, if you don't really seem to hear about anymore Saturday the 20th of August 1988 what a gig what a lineup and like kind of lower madness uh, there was a shaped picture disc not wrong with the record it's just the outer sleeve still got the barcode on very faded um, and you just get prowler same as the 7 inch Uh, I'll try and take it out. There is in existence, but it doesn't bother me because I go for stupid money. You can get some of these where it hasn't been cut, so you get that picture, and then it's just like a straight round, see-through plastic disc round, and they go for hundreds. Stupid, really. But uh, this looks. Brand new as well. This is like sort of what 88, 35 year old. It's, it's like in amazing condition. Some of these are actually in better condition, especially the picture just like this. They're actually in better condition than the original ones I had. So um I'm just glad to have them back in such amazing shape, to be honest. Shame I can't say this I want plastic sleeves. There we go. The evil that men do. Now usually Maiden only release two singles off each album. Um, but because they headlined Donington, they released a third single as a, like a souvenir single. Um, and it came out in seven inch clear vinyl with a poster which I've showed. Black vinyl as well, uh, but also came out in a CD single, which I've got. 12-inch um, single with a gatefold sleeve. But it also came in just a 12-inch with an, a regular sleeve, doesn't have the gatefold. I don't have that one, because the record's the same anyway. And I've done it again. That is not Donington, because he wasn't wearing that. Trust me, I was there. Um Some amazing pickies there. I will show you what he had on in Donington. I'm sure there's one of you from Donington. Yeah, that's definitely Donington. Because where those lights are down there, if you can see them, I think. Oh, there's some trees. And below them was like the burger vans. You can't see it on the camera, but if you've got the record, you can see. Bruce has got his like Blackie Lawless type fairy thing on his legs, so that was definitely the day we were there. Um, that wasn't. I can only tell from the Bruce photos. There, that one was. You can see the things on his legs, like Blackie Lawless wears them all the time. So if you've got this. You know it's Donington when he's got them on. So even the video, the, the video is not filmed at Donington. Um, 
and it's only the studio version of the song as well. Why they did it, I don't know. Um, and this came in a, in a card sleeve with the crappy black label. I don't need to take it out. It's as new. So the clairvoyance live on the 12 inch and it's live on the CD. But on the other formats, like the 7 inch and the picture disc, it's the studio version. And then you get uh, the prisoner on the B side. And on the 12 inch and the CD, you also get Heaven Come Wait Live. All are recorded at Donington. Um, that's, that's what sort of gets on my wick a bit. Because um, I like, especially with it being a commemorative thing. And because I was there as well, I was more excited at the time. And it doesn't bother me so much now, to be fair. Um, I thought there would have been a bit consistent, made sure all the photography was from there as well. The seven inch single, if you look at the back of that, where I said my horrible ex-mate is on, that's Donington. You can see the things on Bruce's legs, what I mean. Um, and then there's a shaped picture disc. Studio version. And the Prisoner Live. Again, no flary things. So that photograph isn't Donington. And slap them out there. Look what I found. Behind the clairvoyant. The trooper. Times two. I told you I had it. So I'll show you this now. That's the A side. Like I said, it was cut round. And there's the B side. With the Iron Maiden logo. And I now know why I've got two. Because that one broke. You see the crack? I wouldn't care. This is the nicer conditioned one as well. Um, the plastic's more see-through. <coughs> It's a shame. Uh, this one's all right. This is in one piece, but like some old picture discs did, it's not as bad as some I've seen. You can see it's not quite as white. That the clear started to go, like a little bit of a brown tinge to it. The records fine and dandy though. And it ain't brown. It's, it's, it's very, very slight. You can just to say, see it. So, oh, I'm so glad I've discovered that. I was getting really worried. Well, I too, so there you go. I knew I wasn't lying. Um, so I shall now put those two Trooper picture discs with the 12 inch. And I will keep the clairvoyant in there. I'll get another one of these for the troopers actually and keep them together. If I do see another trooper decent condition one for not so much money, uh, I'll, I'll probably get it again because I would like a nice decent one like the broken one because apart from the break that's immaculate and I can't remember whether I broke it or not so I think I did you know. I think I, I lifted it up and it just snapped in my hand because I'm an idiot. Anyway back to 1988 that is the clairvoyant and the Clairvoyant Live from Donington. I think I mentioned this on the single as well. Technically, you kind of could class this as a, a fourth single from Seven Son of a Seven Son. However, no matter what format you get this, it is live. Because it was taken off the Made in England VHS. And this is Infinite Dreams Live. This is the 12-inch with the poster sleeve and the etched record. This was the limited one. You can get a box standard 12 inch as well. But this one, you still get the three songs. So there's Infinite Dreams, Killers, and Still Life. How was that for a 12 inch bloody track list? Don't play them very much now. Um, on, the, on, the, on the one that doesn't have the poster or the etched disc, Killers and Still Life are on side two and Infinite Dreams is on side one. But this is all on side one. Because on side two, you get the etched autographs.
pretty funky, hey? I think I'd like the actual um, plain 12 inch. I'll, if I see it cheap enough, I'll, I'll get it. But I ain't gonna go and pay all the odds for it. But it would be nice, because with it being like um, Infinite Dreams on side one on its own, it'll be um, it'd be like a sort of a better pressing. Because the groove will be big again, like I was saying about the um, the German number of the beast ones and stuff. I shall now show you the fold out poster. So you've got a live shot on one side with the dirty great big seventh son Eddie there. And then you get the front and the back of the sleeve, obviously, because it's part of it. And then the other side, it's just a big unused made in England poster. Another fantastic Derek Riggs one there. And as well as the 7 inch, uh, there was two 7 inches actually, one I haven't got I think. Yes, I did, did I? I did, I think I had the two, didn't I, when I showed on the last video. I have to go back and watch the 7 inch singles. Uh, one was just a plain one in the picture sleeve and one had a free patch. That's right. Because as the one with the free patch on the sleeve, it was like EMP for patch. And the other one was just EM. Yeah, both records just said EM. There's also a shared picture disc. Now that looks rough because it's in one of those... Um, anti-static sleeves that you, you, you see those beautiful germ, German Japanese pressings in look at that 299 from HMV in 1989 you pay 30 40 quid for this now it's ridiculous this has only got killers on it doesn't have still life you only get still life on the CD single and the 12 inch so I'll take this out to show you the picky disc can't remember whether this was in one of them or whether I put it in one. Might be already been in one actually. There you go. That's Infinite Dreams. And that is Killers. Both recorded live um, at the Birmingham NEC. On the Seventh Sun Tour. So it was actually... I think I've mentioned before that when the, it said that when they played Donington in 88 it was to be their only UK appearance and then there was two fans got killed so they announced that they were going to be doing um, a UK tour at the end of the year that's where Infinite Dreams was recorded from so although the song does appear on Seven Son of a Seven Son it was recorded a year later in 89 live so I suppose you don't really say it off seven. well it is I don't know Think what you want, make your own minds up. 1989, Infinite Dreams. So there's actually more 12 inch singles than what I realized. So I'm gonna stop it there and I'm gonna do this in two parts. Um, it depends how long this takes me. I will try and get the second one done today as well. So then they're finished. So uh, yeah, so that's the end of the 12 inch singles for now, part one. Part two will be following very shortly. Hope you enjoyed that. I've left you on a bit of a cliffhanger if you're a Maiden fan. Don't worry, it'll be today or tomorrow when the next one comes up. Um, so I'd like to thank you all for watching and I do hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you don't like Maiden, I'm so sorry for boring you because I know some of you are waiting for films and stuff. Some of you couldn't really give a toss whether I do anything ever again, but there you go. You can't please everybody. So I'll do part two of this next Thank you so much for watching, all two of you. I do appreciate it. If you have subscribed, you're a star. Love you to bits, and I really do appreciate it. Um, I'm not going to keep saying subscribe, subscribe. You want to subscribe, you will. It says it on the intro. That's why I don't really ask. Because I know when I watch videos, it bugs me when people go, oh, like some to stop to tell you to. No. Um be nice if you would like the video as well because apparently that makes it spread and more people see it so i'm told but i'm ignorant about this i'm just grateful you're watching i'm grateful if you have subscribed thank you very much indeed i'll see you very soon for part two y'all take care of yourselves and i shall see you soon Ta -ta.